Hello everybody and welcome to LiDAR Academy. My name is Giuseppe Improta and in this episode we are talking about light temperature. In my experience as a lighter in visual effects as well as feature animation production, I've noticed that not many artists are used to the concept of setting a light temperature for the color of their lights, their 3D lights. Uh, a lot of people prefer to actually just pick a color and then go from there and see with trial and error how the color plays in their composition, in their work, in their shots. My approach is slightly different. Although I understand the artistic approach of picking just a color, I also have to say that it's important to understand and know what are the real values of light in the real world. Especially now that everything is physically plausible and physically based, you want to make sure that you start from a solid base and make sure that you understand what is the specific light temperature in that specific condition and then reproduce that in your 3D or in your uh, graphic software. So it's really important, I believe, that we dig a little bit further into why uh, the light is uh, measured in temperature and uh, where did this come from and uh, see how this uh, plays to your advantage in the creation of your composition or in uh, uh, the final in your shot. First of all, light temperature or color is defined in Kelvin, is expressed in Kelvin, and Kelvin is just another measurement unit uh, that exists to measure temperatures. The other ones are, for example, uh, centigrade degrees or uh, Fahrenheit degrees. But why are we using a temperature unit to measure and define color of the light? What is the relationship between heat or temperature and color? Well, in order to answer that, we have to diversify how light works. First of all, you can have an object emitting light and you can have an object simply absorbing part of the light and reflective part of the light that something else is emitting. These are two important distinctions because one has to do with generation of light, with the creation of light, and the other one has to do with simply how an object deals with light. So creation versus interaction. Light is generated in form of photons, which are these uh, small particles uh, that also travel according to different wavelengths. So uh, light is uh, made of different particles that have different uh, paths. In order to create light, to generate and emit light, we have to energize a body or we have to ignite a body. For example, the basic generation of, a, of a light happens when we uh, turn a fire on and when we set the wood on fire, basically we produce heat and light. And heat and light are two separate phenomena and are related in a way that we will discuss in a minute, but are also two separate elements, two separate uh, forms of energy. So keep this in mind always. Heat and light are two different kinds of energy. Light is an electromagnetic radiation that happens after a body is uh, heated. Light is made of different particles that have different uh, uh, wavelengths. So this path, this traveling that these molecules does is different according to each different molecule that light is made of. So you have some photons that basically have a very short wavelengths and you have some photons that have bigger wavelengths. When uh, photons are produced they start traveling away uh, from the source of the emission and they travel in all directions. Now there is no point into getting too much into atoms and molecules and the structure uh, that made that uh, things are made of, but uh, we need to understand that when we give current, so when we energize something like the bulb, for example, or we set something on fire, we are effectively changing the structure of that uh, that uh, body, or we are creating in a way movement because the atoms start moving in different ways. This movement and all these collisions 
collisions that happens when atoms move generate part of heat and part of light. In a future video we will see what is efficiency and so the relation between heat and uh, light produced uh, but for now let's stick to the color side of things. There is a relation between heating an object and the color it produces and actually this is how we can establish also the temperature of the stars for example uh, because we know that uh, uh, the higher the temperature the whiter the color becomes starting from a warmish red color. Um, that is also why in uh, artistic matters we say that you know a light is warm or a light is cool according if to if uh, the light is uh, um, redder or bluer. The sun is uh, burning at incredible temperature so uh, the light that is emitting from the sun is actually white. Now why the sun is yellow to our eyes and why for example sunrise uh, sunset are reddish uh, it's a different kind of problem, a um, problem that is related to where the light travels through. And this is something that we will talk about in the next video when we will talk about color in general. So uh, the actual light of the sun is a white and comes to our eyes as a very strong bright white light because the temperature is super high. But there are stars that are actually red and stars that are blue and uh, those are uh, also uh, ways of defining the temperature of the stars. A red star is usually less uh, hot than a blue star because of what we said about uh, warming up a body, warming up an object. Now I think it's really important to understand these things because this helps you relate better to uh, the mechanism that regulate how light works and it's important to also know what are the temperatures of uh, basic things around us. I was really surprised to notice that many many artists don't actually know what is the light temperature of a candle flame for example and uh, uh, most people just pick a reddish color and they put it in their shots and this is not a good thing because a red flame and a candle light has very specific tones and very specific values of red and you want to make sure that you pick the right colors that then when mixed with other maybe blue lights are creating a complexity that makes you feel exactly that sort of ambience and it's important as an artist to understand that mixing the right color is also what creates the right mood so if you pick a brown red that you think it's resembling a candlelight you might be uh, making a mistake and a mistake that will push you away from uh, transmitting from uh, giving the right feeling of uh, the warmth of the candlelight. So now a candlelight is an example but there are many different situations where you might want to start at least from a, a solid uh, temperature, a solid value for the temperature of your lights. So all this to say that light temperature is a very important factor. As an artist I believe you should know at least the basic temperatures that are outside a sunrise, sunset, candlelight, flame from a fire, blue sky and overcast sky and also you should add to your list also uh, the lights that are made artificially that we have created because those lights even though they are trying to reproduce something that we see in nature are very specific lights. The lights that we use for example in cinematography vary from tungsten halogen lights which are really warm at 3200 Kelvin uh, to HMIs that are actually daylight sort of lights so they are made to emulate the daylight look outside. Uh, the, they are uh, 5600 Kelvin and then there are a combination of lights, fluorescent lights. We will do an episode where we check the actual cinematography lights that are available today. And then also we have the LED lights that uh, allow us now with RGB white LED LEDs to mix and match colors the way we want them. So the way I personally work when I start lighting a shot, whatever uh, it is, visual effects or uh, feature animation, I start from a uh, realistic temperature of the light. 
and then I know that at least I'm using solid reference points that then I can mix and match the way I want to achieve that creative, that uh, uh, visual uh, look interest that I want. If you start picking colors uh, without having a really nothing to relate to, it becomes harder than to understand why a shot is looking weird or why the temperature of a shot is looking weird. Um, it's really hard to pick the right red tones, for example, to communicate a very vibrant yet warm and uh, uh, strong looking uh, candlelight. It's not an easy thing to do and it's a very difficult task for an artist to to transmit that feeling of candlelight because our eyes are so uh, very in love with, with that particular feeling, it creates all sorts of emotion, which we will uh, study in the third videos uh, about light, which is the psychological influence of light. So uh, I prefer this kind of approach, call it more scientific approach if you will, but I think you start from solid foundations and then you can diverge into something that is more creative, but at least you know that you picked the right colors and then you can shuffle these colors all together as a whole and you can color grade these shots uh, the way you want and then you can experiment starting from a solid starting point and start asking yourself why is uh, this uh, color temperature like this? Why do I see the sunrise red? I will explain more things in the next coming videos, but uh, I think that as an artist, and it doesn't matter if you do 3D, if you do uh, painting, if you do uh, photography, these are common uh, subjects that everybody should know because the way light works is universal. It's the same for me, it's the same for you. And everybody actually should know uh, that uh, this light has these temperatures so that they can communicate better as an artist and they can also advise each other on how to make things look better. Now the reason that I'm stressing out the importance of measuring your light temperature in Kelvin and uh, using a right value is not because there is something wrong with picking up a color, a specific color, but you need the experience to make sure that the color you are picking up is correct. And if you think that the color is correct and then the shot looks like garbage, then you have to go back and check the values of your lights because very likely you picked some tones that is not accurate, is not correct. I've seen a lot of times very weird color casting in some shots uh, because people underestimated the importance of picking the right color temperature, which is actually the basic of your lighting, a basic of lighting a shot, lighting a scene. It's almost like uh, missing up the white balance of, an, of a shooting. And this is where the magic happens. If you pick the right color temperature um, uh, of, for example, the sun or uh, the candle or whatever you want, and you mix it with something else that has the right color temperature too, then you start getting those kinds of gradients and uh, uh, tones that really make the image pop and really make the image very nice. It's something magic that happens when the right color mixed together and uh, if you have uh, experience in painting you know that, you know that mixing colors, the right colors together give you that exact tone that we can relate to as human beings. So again, nothing wrong in picking up the colors of the light, just make sure that those colors match the light temperature of that specific situation. Unless you want to creatively uh, uh, deviate from that uh, reality and uh, this is something that happens all often but more often than not we tend to use color of lights that resemble reality. Even in cinematography, for example, it's rare that we use uh, very saturated lights because those are not natural. We are not used to those kind of colors. And there are exceptions to this, obviously, that have more to do with uh, um, creativity and uh, uh, visual choices, obviously, uh, than not uh, emulating reality, which is then all what an artist is about, right? We are not here to emulate reality at all times. We are here to con convey emotions and uh, uh, create pieces that uh, uh, that communicate something because otherwise we are sterile copies of the reality and nobody needs that. 
to cut it short guys make sure that the color of your lights is correct make sure that you are mixing the right colors together and make sure to go deeper into these things that apparently are simple but simple are not this wraps up the first video on light and color thank you for watching and for sticking around feel free to comment below ask me questions feel free to uh, suggest topics that you want to know more about and if you like this video hit the like button and also uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, click on the bell button if you want to be notified of future videos that's it i'll see you in the next one bye